Better leave it hurts, you know? I would have already been out of here if Mom hadn't asked so many questions. The doctor kept me overnight just to calm her down. You know, sometimes you just have to humor Mom. She seemed more scared than us after the bus crash. I know, but if we don't stop her, she's going to make them take x-rays of me from the top of my head to my toes. Too late. No one goes anywhere until the doctor assures me you're both okay. The doctor said I'd be out of my cast in time for the spring karate tournament. Let's take it one step at a time, okay? You're so lucky to have walked away with just a broken leg and you only a few scratches. I couldn't believe how thrashed the bus was. There were smashed pieces everywhere. Go ahead, think about that. Let's think positive. Like getting out of here? I just let the doctors run a few more tests to make sure there's nothing wrong they can't see, okay? And I'll come back later and play some video games. Okay, cool. Thanks, Michael. For what? For finding me in the snow and for getting everyone help. You were awesome. Oh, you're pretty brave yourself. You both were. Get some rest, okay? Okay. See you later, buddy. Okay, Mom. No. We both are. You have family and friends who care about you. I noticed that your friend Abby was here looking for you last night. Abby knew I was on the trip. When she heard about the bus crash, she, she rushed to the hospital to make sure I wasn't hurt. That's nice. I mean, she was worried about you. Yeah. I would have done the same thing if it was reversed. All for someone you're just tutoring in math. I think you're seeing a lot more of Abby, then you're letting on. Mom, I know you think she's too old for me. You weren't exactly subtle. Look, I just can't imagine Abby being the kind of person you'd be attracted to. When did you get so judgmental? I'm not being judgmental. No. I just don't think she belongs with no, me. No, no, what you're saying is you don't think Abby's the person that you want for me. But it's not your call, Mom. It's mine. Okay, not that it matters. Abby's just a friend. So you can relax. I'm fine. Oh, I was hoping you'd show up here this morning. Yeah, um, I'm glad to show up anywhere after last night. I know, gosh, I was at work and I started hearing customers talk about this bus crash, how all the people from General Hospital were on it, and all I kept thinking was, you know, I, I was me who, who convinced you to go. So I made this ridiculous excuse and I grabbed my coat and I just ran straight to the hospital. You did? You didn't get in trouble because of it, did you? Oh, I don't care if I did. I mean, I wasn't going to rest until I knew you were okay. Yeah. <laughs> that could have been a lot worse. I know. Yeah, it was for Allie. Allie? With the girl you told me about? Yeah. Uh, she, uh, she didn't make it. Michael, that's awful. I am so sorry. Is there anything I can do? No, no. I mean, you already did. Last night when you showed up at the hospital, I was, I was just thinking about you, and then and there you were. Well, I told you, I needed to know that you were alive. I don't know if this means anything, but I was sitting next to this man while I was waiting to see you, and it turned out that it was your, your father. And I, I hope it's okay, but I, I told him that we were friends. Me, you know, and this nice man, both of us worried and nervous. And, you know, he asked me who I was waiting for. Of course, I told him, Michael Corinthos. Just a small world, huh? Yeah. I'm, I'm glad my dad got to meet you, though. That's great. We figured out pretty quickly that I was uh, a dancer. And he said he was doing a strip club. Yeah, that's right, he did. He gets it. And all he really wants is for me to be happy anyway. What makes you happy, Michael? Makes me happy. Right now, sitting here with you. I'm feeling by your breakfast, it'll be even better. <laughs> <laughs>